have you ever considered a career in the land-based sector? In today's show, we are going to be outlining what Chagas Education can offer you. We'll be hearing from past and current students, along with staff from the various colleges. We'll be getting an insight into the diverse courses on offer and the various careers available to you. We'll be going live to Mount Bellew Agricultural College, where we will be hearing from students and staff firsthand on what to expect of college life and in particular of what to expect on the upcoming college open days. As a current student myself, thinking back on the college open day, it really sealed the deal that dairy farming was the career for me. So let's hear about what Chagas Education can offer you. Good morning everyone and thanks for joining us for this webinar today, coming to you live from our Chaga studio in Oak Park. If you have any questions, please submit them online and we will do our best to get through them in the Q&A later on. To start, I'd like to hand you over to Dr Anne-Marie Butler, Chagas Head of Education, who is going to give us a short overview of Chagas Education. Over to you Anne-Marie. Thanks very much Ellen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anne-Marie Butler. I'm Head of Education with Chagask, and it's my great honour to welcome you to this, our first ever live education webinar from the studio here in Chagask headquarters. You're very welcome. The benefits and options that a Chagask education offers are numerous, and across the webinar this morning, you'll have great opportunities to hear from our current students, past students, staff and colleagues about all the options that are there and what a Chagask course can offer to you. For those of you not familiar with Chagask Education, we operate across seven locations where each of our locations has a fully functioning farm or horticulture unit. Our colleges from the Chagas perspective are in Ballyhays in Cavan, the Botanic Gardens in Dublin, Kildalton in South Kilkenny in Piltown and Clonakilty in West Cork. We also enjoy a very positive, strong working relationship with three private colleges, Mount Bellew in Galway, Gertine in Tipperary and the Silesian College in Palace Kenry down in Limerick. So why come to our open days? 
Our open days will operate across the next couple of weeks. We offer courses in agriculture, horticulture, equine and forestry. By attending these open days, you will get a first-hand experience of what these courses entail, what our facilities are, and the wonderful teams of staff we have across the colleges who are here to support you and guide you. Our courses are really enjoyed by learners because they're a blend of both the classroom and outdoor, be it in the fields, in the tunnels, on horses, working directly with animals. As you'll hear later from Karen, who joins us from Clonakilty, there are options for students to progress to level seven and level eight right across the country, depending on your preference. There's a huge variety of courses on offer. There's wonderful facilities, and you'll see that right across this morning through some of our videos and our Q&A. As you'll see from the pictures on slide, our learners enjoy very practical learning, and this is always one of the strongest bits of feedback that we get. So I ask you to please sit back, relax, enjoy the webinar. Please do engage with us on the Q&A, but do consider coming to a Chagask Open Day for 2023. Come experience the college and the facilities for yourself. You'll be guaranteed a very warm welcome, and I very much look forward to welcome you. Best wishes in all your studies. So I'll hand you back to Ellen. Thanks for that, Anne-Marie. Can I ask you to join me over here to discuss your presentation? And as you're doing that, I'll take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Ellen Doherty and I'm 19 years old. I'm a level six dairy student in Kildalton College. I'm dairy farming at home in South Kilkenny and I'm currently on work placement in Wexford. Now, thanks for that informative presentation, Anne-Marie. I have a few questions following on. What do you feel are the major benefits of attending one of the upcoming college open days? Yeah, well, the open days, Ellen, offer people a real first-hand experience at the colleges. The college will be fully open, functioning, the farms and horticulture, equine, all fully open. So students really get a feel for what's there. And I suppose it really helps just to get to see where you'll be you know, learning, where you'll be interacting with students and with staff um, and to ask questions. And, you know, you're very welcome to bring parents and family, friends, teachers. So it's really a day for everybody to come and learn more about Chagask education. And why should students consider a Chagask course? Yeah, well, look, you'll see across the videos that played this morning, the facilities that are there are first class. We're very fortunate in Chagas that we also link with research and advisory, and we can bring that into the classrooms. Um, certainly that blend of classroom and outdoor, as you'll see from Mount Bellew this morning, you know, facilities that are there, equipment, uh, and certainly our staff. Look, our staff are here to support students, and as you would have found yourself, it's a nice homely environment and people make friends for life. It really is. And where can viewers get more information on the open days and courses? So right across our social media, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, there'll be lots of information there. Each of the colleges themselves have all their own social media. But if you want to go to the, I suppose, the Chagas website, www.chagas.ie uh, forward slash education, you'll get information on the open days, um, when they're on, you know, how to book or how to get in contact. But I'd encourage people to come and visit us, um, explore it um, and get to know us a little yeah. bit better. Get a feel for yourself. Absolutely. That's perfect. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Now, just before we go live to Mount Bellew, we visited the college last week where we shot a video that gives you an insight into the daily activities of college life.
We're now going live to Mount Bellew, where I'm joined by Amy McGee and Michael O'Flynn. Thanks for joining us today. I see it hasn't started raining on you yet up there anyway. Um, I can see you have a wide range of activities taking place behind you. The last video there gave us a great overview of the range of equipment and facilities that you have both in the college and on the farm. Michael, how important is this modern technology for the student and their learning? It allows the students to get hands-on experience in a practical situation where they're learning by doing. They're out and about. You can see in the background we have students working on a plough there and further back we have people in the field working there also. So when you're out and about and you're, 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 you're learning by doing, is a hands-on practical scenario. Um, if you're, you're speaking about the technology and equipment that we have, just on my side here, if I move out of the way, you will see that we, we're, we're showing um, a new piece of equipment that we have here ourselves, which is a, a fertilizer spreader that is controlled by GPS, essentially. And um, when it goes into the field, it will not allow us to spread fertilizer, overdose fertilizer, and put on excess, which is obviously a very sustainable piece of equipment to be using in the, in the current environment. And Michael, do the students get a chance to use this new and modern technique? They certainly, they certainly will, Ellen. Um, when our level six MEC students come back off of their practical learning period, this equipment will be in the field at that stage and they're the ones that will be working it. So um, yes is the answer to your question, they will work it. And as a current student, Amy, can you tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, so morning, Ellen. Uh, so I'm Amy and I'm 19. Um, I'm currently a level six dry stock student here in Mount Bellew. Um, I chose to do the dry stock side of things because I come from a dry stock farm at home in Leitrim, so I have both sheep and cattle, so that's why I decided to take that route. And we got a great insight of the college in the video. It looks like there's a super variety of activities for the students each day. Amy, do you think the students enjoy the blend of both being in the classroom and outside for practicals? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a big part of the Chagas course is that it's nearly 50-50 outside learning and inside learning. If you're like me, when I was in school, I uh, wasn't the biggest fan of the book. So it's nice to have that chance to do the learning outside. And it also benefits you then too when you go and do your work placement in both level five and level six. And all colleges have great teams of staff ready to help all learners. How important are the college open days when deciding where to study, Michael? Uh, Ellen, I would say the important thing is that people come to the open day and speak with the staff. Um, when you come to an open day, you get to meet all of the staff. Um, the majority of them are very young, not long out of college, much closer to the age group of the, the students than I would be. But you get to speak to everybody, you get to question everybody, you get to see the facilities where you will be working in. And if you have any concerns, you can, you can question those on the day and uh, people will be more than happy to um, advise you on, on your best route to take. And Amy, do you have any advice for students who are considering applying for a Chagas course? Well, as Mike said, I think the open day was a big no-brainer for me. It definitely pushed me to come to Mount Bellew. I suppose talking to current or past students as well gives you good insight of what college life is like. And I feel like it's a great social kind of experience coming to college here with the outdoor events and different things and you make great friends and everything as well with both lecturers and students. Perfect. Thanks very much for that. And just a reminder that we are live, so do send in any questions that you have. Amy and Michael are staying with us for the Q&A at the end. We now, have a short <laughs> we now have a short video of past students' experiences studying with Chagusk. Farm work is a big thing here in Gartine. Once a week, first year students go out and you do your farm work. It's hands on experience, which I have to say benefited me the most because coming from not having a farming background, um, I wouldn't have been overly confident or wouldn't have known a whole lot to say about skills such as dehorning, weighing cows, um, looking at body condition scoring, calving, just little things like that. And that helped me build an awful lot of confidence for myself. Everything I learned in Kildalton 
has all come to fruition through my own business. Um, everything from the lecturer's advice, the practical side of the learning in the afternoon up there, the, the nursery stock, the plant names, the weed identification, the landscape design, um, even how to run a business, the business plan, how to, how to get equipment ready, maintain your equipment. Um, there's a vast amount of knowledge in Kildalton with the lecturers. Uh, I really enjoyed the time in Bally Hayes. It was great. It was a great learning experience. So it was. Um, I knew nothing about forestry really when I was going in, and there's a lot more things that I know now. Um, I used the forestry simulator, the the Ford or the harvester simulator. Um, it was very good. It was very hands-on as well. Um, very much like a real machine. I wanted to do a career in horses. Uh, it's the only thing that interested me. I didn't want to be sitting in an office 24-7. I wanted to be out doing stuff with horses. Um, it's the only career that I kind of had in mind for myself. We break and tra train horses for sale. We start off with kind of the youngest we'd have as three-year-olds and kind of smallest heights would be about maybe 14 twos as we're quite tall riders and uh, just get them ready for their next home basically. Uh, I love going to work in the morning. You get to be out in the outdoors, you get to work with a load of different horses and when you get to the sales you can say you've done everything with them and once you have um, built up a good reputation then clients will come back and buy off you again. It's very rewarding. I suppose the big thing is you don't have to be from a farming background to do the course down in Kildalton. It, it, it was an obvious choice for me to do the crops and machinery. It, it was it was a one-stop shop for me. It was the practical side, getting out on different farms and, and seeing what diff different people are doing. About two weeks into the course, we went on a trip over to England. Um, so we went to the Lama Show and we went to the JCB factory. It was probably the highlight of the year. I'm now joined live by David Melody in Kilkenny, who is another past student. Thanks for joining us, David. Hey, Alan, how are things? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Now, would you be able to tell us a little about your background and what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 10 years into a couple of minutes. Uh, so David Melody, currently here just outside Kilkenny City itself, managing a large scale dairy farm, uh, spring calving herd, 28 years of age, originally from Clare, from a beef and suckler um, farm. Dad is still farming at home, so I needed to go and find my own way of living, which suited as well. I sat the leave insert in 2011. After that, I went to Limerick Institute of Technology for a year to do internet systems development, and I just found the indoors in an office wasn't for me at the time. I went to Palace Skinnery Eye College then in 2012, got in touch with the principal at the time, and luckily enough, I got in. There was a huge demand for places at the time. Agriculture was, there was a big demand for ag jobs, so it was really hard, but I was lucky I got in. Um, spent two years there. It was mainly suckler on that side. I got three month placement on a suckler farm in 2013. Then I did a few days. You have to do a weekend on the farm in Palace Henry as part of being a student there. And that was the first time I ever milked a cow, funnily enough. Um, and I really liked it, loved working with the dairy cow, found them very more docile, I will say, than the suckler and the beef cow, and just really enjoyed working with them. Um, it was a great, great, great lifestyle even to it, as well as a job. Um, very rewarding, it was tough at times, but I found the tougher it was and things went well, great rewards from it. So after the two years there, then I found this fire management course, it was a diploma in dairy fire management, based out of Moor Park, but you're on, uh, you're on work placement for for 24 months, for two years, and it's about 80 to 90% practical based. It's fantastic. You're working with some of the top farmers in the country. And also an incentive was you get away to New Zealand in the middle of it for six months. So effectively, we've done three calvings in two years. And just from hands-on experience, it was the best way of developing my own skills. I found if I want to go manage a farm, I even found if some of the lads in the course, they want to go home farming. I still think it's really mandatory to do it. You will learn so much, you improve faster, and you're coming home to with way more skills adapted by just working with some really top operators here and abroad. Um, so we got block days as well in Moor Park with some really good top researchers and everything. So that was absolutely fantastic. All the access to information that I never took for granted until I left and had to use them when I was out my own two feet. So I finished in 20, 
2016 from the course and then I went to Callan just outside Kilkenny, worked as a system farm manager on two farms and um, built up my experience more. Probably would have stayed around there only I got a scholarship through Mocker and the Firm at the time. It was Stephen Cullinan that gave me the opportunity to go back out to New Zealand again, stayed out there for 12 months, um, came home and then I was offered the farm management job here. I was doubting myself, but after speaking with the owners, um, I just, it's a good I suppose, went for it. I was very nervous, but four years now, looking back, it was probably the best thing I ever done. It was fantastic. A lot of mistakes. But it was you brilliant. mentioned that you were in New Zealand. Um, how did your time in New Zealand help your career and your personal development? Um, it was it was huge. So you get to travel a lot while you're working. It was fantastic working in the outdoors. It was nicer weather over there too. They, they guaranteed eight or nine months summer, so it was brilliant. Um, yeah, just build my own independence, I suppose, my own my own frame of mind too. It was more positive towards um, the outlook of everything. I would have been very negative beforehand, but. I tell you, just the New Zealand people and Kiwis, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was excellent. Like, like every young person, I'd advise them to go abroad as well. And what did you enjoy most about your course? And would you recommend travelling as part of the course as well? 100%, yeah, definitely go travel. I do find people that go travel, they come back, just seem to have a better attitude. Like, they're, they're more open mindedness and more robust as well. And yeah, definitely. Def the courses I would have done through Palace Henry, I'm sure Kildall and kind of Kilty, they're all the same. Very hands-on, as said in the videos prior, and very practical based, which suited someone like me academically. I was never strong, so it was a great way of learning. And what advice would you give to somebody interested in a career in farming? Uh, kind of same words. Go travel, open-minded, positive attitude. Um, it's a high-pressure job when you're going farming, as any farmer would tell you, but it's fierce rewarding. You get to work with animals working in the outdoors. There's a great work-life balance if you manage it yourself correctly. Uh, really enjoy it, yeah. And then just surround yourself with positive people. Then build your mentors and people you can depend on. Perfect. Thanks for that, David. And make sure to stay with us for the Q&A session at the end. I'm now joined here in studio by Karen O'Connell, Assistant Principal in Clonakilty College. Good morning, Karen. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Now, Karen, why should students, parents or teachers go to an open day and what will they see? Um, I suppose as people have said already, Helen, like you will get to see the facilities in each of the agricultural colleges. We're always getting new modern equipment and you know improving the technology. So that would all be available for you on the day of the open day. Um, you'll get more insight into the actual content of the courses, the modules, the subjects, the practical skills that are all going to be completed during your study. And also you'll get some guidance on well, which is the best option for you, which course is the best option. But aside from that, you will get more information on the actual logistics of going to college. How do you apply? Do I need help with applying for the course? Do I need to get accommodation? How do I apply for a grant? So all of the ins and outs, what we find from open days in Clonakilty and in all the agricultural colleges, people have individual questions and you know it's always easier to get the answer you're looking for if you're asking somebody face to face. So we'd encourage anybody who has any bit of interest at all to come along to the open day. And how does a typical day in an ag college differ from your day in secondary school? Um, I suppose it's very different. There's less classes. I know in secondary school it's usually about nine classes a day. So in the Ag College, we are in all of them, it is very practical. Um, now that being said, there is theory to back up that practical. So typically in the morning, in most of the agricultural colleges, there would be four or five classes every morning and all the students would be together. And then in the afternoon, the students would be divided into a smaller practical group of maybe 12 to 14 students. And as the lads were saying there, they're out in the yard, they're working the machines, they're doing the animal husbandry, they're doing the communication, the farm business, the soils. So it's a very good mixture of the theory that backs behind the practical, but it's definitely a nice combination of both. So inside and outside every day. And can you tell us a little about the options for students who are thinking of progressing to level 7 and level 8 courses after completing their Chagos course? I can, yeah. And re mentioned it in her slides there. You know, when you apply to an ag college, you know, that's a starting point for people who are very young when they're starting and they mightn't be sure what exactly they want to do long term. 
once you get your level six, your two year qualification in the agricultural college, you can apply to go into um, a technological university and progress on to a level seven or a level eight, a degree um, qualification, which opens up um, different opportunities to you afterwards. So you have that option to go from the ag college to the technological university, or you also have the option of applying for an apprenticeship. And uh, currently there is a sports turf apprenticeship available from September, and we are on track to have um, apprenticeships, uh, two apprenticeships in agriculture and one in horticulture come September. So you have a number of options once you, once you get started. And what is the education eligibility for requirements for the course? Yeah, so I suppose for to apply to an agricultural college, firstly, uh, you just have to be mm -hmm. 17 on the 1st of September. So if you want to start in September 2023, you just need to be 17 on the 1st of January, sorry, the 1st of January um, in 2024. So there's no CAO points, you apply online, the applications are currently open, uh, you go through the process online, you'll be guided through the application process um, and there's some documentation that's required there. And if you have any trouble applying or progressing your application online, you can always contact the college, there'll be somebody on the phone that'll be happy to help you out there. But the the only requirement we have is that you must be 17 on the 1st of January after you start. Now we do have some questions coming in from the audience and I can see here Karen we'll continue with you for another few minutes. No problem. Um, what would a person need to have completed their leaving cert or junior cert to go into the course? Um, the, the short answer is no. We do get queries from parents of um, prospective students where the student is maybe you know not happy in secondary school, we would encourage people to finish um, out their second level education, but the requirement to apply is that you must be 17 on the 1st of January after you start. So we're not going to look at leaving cert points or applied leaving cert marks or anything like that. You just apply online um, and follow through the processes there. And do you accept any other QQI qualifications or is it just like your leaving cert, junior cert? Okay, so, so we're not looking at the Leaving Cert or Junior Cert and I suppose sometimes we do get students that might come in and maybe they've done like a milking course with the FRS or some other company or they might have done something with a boom spray and have a certificate, a component certificate from that. Um, if they do present them to us, we look at them individually because everybody's situation is individual, individual and sometimes yes, they can substitute that for another module in some instances. Perfect. Now, I have another question here for David. So what are the current opportunities for employment as a farm manager? Well, fantastic. It's good to hear that question come in. Um, yeah, plenty. Um, find your contacts. If you come through the courses, you will find plenty of advisors there even to help you out. But there's land mobility. There's the farm management course itself. They're, they're in the journal. There's, there's plenty of opportunities um, there. Yeah, loads, loads. Not only at home, but abroad as well. They're everywhere. And back to you, Karen. Mm -hmm. um, have the number of female students increased in agricultural education in recent years? Um, I suppose we see a difference in different years. We do find that people who come through the CEO into the technological universities, there does tend to be a higher number of females in that. That said, every year we would have a number of girls in our full-time level five courses and level six courses. It does vary year to year. Some years you'd get a spike um, and some years it drops back a little bit, but there's girls in every class. And one other thing I wanted to say as well, Ellen, is uh, people don't have to be from a farm. You know, if they've any interest in horticulture or agriculture or equine or forestry or whatever it is, they needn't be coming from that background. Um, that's not going to stop them just um, getting a place. Exactly, just have an interest in it. And are supports available to help students with additional learning requirements? There are, Ellen. Um, as part of the application process, students will be asked if they have had any, if they have any learning difficulties and maybe to specify what they are. Um, so we'll see that in the application process and then in each of the agricultural colleges we do have a dedicated, they're called an access officer in each of the agricultural colleges and that person will meet with all of those students and see are there any additional supports that we need to put in place for those students. So we do provide that um, to students and like that it's on a very individual basis because obviously everybody's needs might be different. And what courses do you run for mature students? For mature students, okay, so you have two options if you are a mature student. You can do a course which is called a part-time 
course, um, which you don't need any qualification for. You just need to be over 23. And that course will take about two to two and a half years maximum. And it involves the student attending for approximately a day and a half a week. So that part time course is for students, prospective students who have not qualified in anything else. We do have another um, set of courses uh, which we call a distance education program and these are for people who are award holders. So that is people who have qualified in something else. So it could be you know, nurses, guards, carpenters, plasterers. So they must have a further, a higher, uh, a major award at level six or higher to be eligible for the distance program. And that typically involves one day of coming to the college a month over the duration of about 14 or 15 months. So depending on whether you're qualified or not, you have different options. And again, everybody's welcome to come to the open days. And if they have any specific questions, you know, of their own individual circumstances, we're more than happy to answer them. Now, uh, we have a question there for Mount Bellew, for Amy and Michael. Um, do the students do jobs outside of farming when they're in the college? Yeah, well, um, the dairy students do all have to take a turn doing the milkings, whether it be in the morning or the evening. And then also ourselves then sometimes around lambing and stuff, we have to stay back and help with things like that. So yeah, we do get jobs as well as the just college practicals. And for David as well as yourself, Amy, you're both young farmers. Are you optimistic about farming into the future? Amy, do you want to go? Um, well, yeah, I think farming is, I suppose it's changing a good bit and there's coming in a lot more technologies and stuff, but I suppose it's, what would you say, it's, um, I don't know, <laughs> it's, I'll go over to you, it's, David, go, if you... it's going in the right direction, I suppose. Yeah, and over to you, David, are you optimistic? Yeah, absolutely, um, in a big way, uh, I have a student here at the moment from UCC, working with me for five months, um, very good guy, took to the ground so well, um, which is great to see. Um, huge opportunity, great courses out there too in universities and the ag colleges themselves and more. So that's great to see. I was um, amazed at the video there at the start. It's just since 10 years since I was in ag college, how much it's coming on, modernizing with the society of today, like um, we're adapting like to all the changes. So yeah, absolutely. At the moment, I'm even doing my, a part-time course as a mature student up in Dundalk. It's brand new ag science level seven over two years so yeah i'll be staying in it as well so yeah definitely and you have to be optimistic as well like as agriculture is the backbone of ireland in my eyes um loads of employment in it there already and we just need to keep promoting it for new people to come into it and karen back to you and um, you already said it but just there's a bit of repetition and some people are unsure what age do you have to be to attend the ag college so you have to be 17 on the 1st of January after you start. The 1st of January. 1st of January, yeah, sorry. 1st of January after you start, 17. That's perfect. And do you need writing experience for the equine courses or should you just check in with the college just to make sure? Yeah, I would check in exactly as you said, check in with the college just to be sure of exactly what's required um, in, in, in the more spec more specialised courses like the equine and the forestry. All the information will be available on their websites and on the open days there as well. That's perfect. Um, just have a look through there. Um, we have a question here on horticulture. Is there much opportunity for horticulture students across the country? after doing one of the horticulture courses? Um, I suppose uh, there, there's a number of areas in, in horticulture. Um, you know, there's the more commercial type of horticulture and there's sort of fruit and vegetable um, growing there. So, I mean, again, like for all of those specific courses, I would encourage people who are particularly interested in those niche sort of areas to attend at the open days. Um, horticulture is delivered in the Botanics in Dublin and in Kildalton Agricultural College as well. So there's plenty of opportunity there for people to go and um, suss them out. Perfect. And now to Michael in Mount Bellew. Do you need a driving license for the courses that are offered? You do uh, certainly. Um, when, when students uh, begin the course they have to present their driving license. Um, <coughs> it may be that they don't have a full driving license but once they have the, the learner permit that allows them to get up on tractors and use tractors and uh, that uh, makes our insurance company happy and the insurance company of Chagas happy so that uh, we have ourselves covered in that way. Perfect, thanks Michael. 
And Karen, back to you again. <laughs> How do you apply for the apprenticeships and is there information at the open days in regards to them? Um, so all the applications for um, Chagas courses are online. Okay. Um, like, uh, like was mentioned there, we've been moving with the technology over the last number of years, so all the applications will be online. And as those apprenticeships come on stream, um, they're on track at the moment, so as they come on stream, that application process will be online. And any information um, that you need on those will, uh, will be available at the open days. That's perfect. Um, we have... Sorry, so I should specify, when I say online, go to chagas.ie um, and follow the links on the education side um, and you'll be able to find the courses you're looking for there. And do Chagas do forestry courses is another question there coming in. Yeah, there are forestry courses that are completed in Valley Hayes, the Agricultural College up in Cavan. It's the same application process for all the courses. Go to chagas.ie and you, you will see the list of um, courses that are available and the application for each of them. Perfect. Thanks, Millie, for that, Karen and David and Amy. That's all we have time for today. And if you have any further questions or any questions come to mind in the next few days, just refer back to one of your colleges and they'll do the best to answer them. Now, I'd like to thank the panellists, Anne-Marie Butler earlier on and Karen O'Connell now, who join me here today in studio. I'd also like to thank David Melody, Amy McGee and Michael O'Flynn, who joined me here online. Can I remind you of the College Open Days that are running in March? All the information you need is on the Chagas website as well as on their social media. And I'd like to take this opportunity to wish those taking exams this year all the best, both with their exams and in their future careers. Finally, thank you to all in the production team and from all of us here from the Chagas studio, thank you for watching and do take care. <laughs>